so let's meet our Wi-Fi 7 wireless bridge with a 90 degrees horn antenna. Hi tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. So as you can see, this university wants IP camera across their path and student areas. But running new fiber or copper isn't practical and trenching will blow the budget and the landscaping. So today in this video, we'll solve it with wireless bridges that hauls all those video feed back to the control room cleanly, reliably, and without digging. So instead of wiring every pole, we're going to build a wireless backhaul from one master bridge to remote bridges mounted near the cameras to form point to multipoint setup. So think of point to multipoint as one speaker talking to many listeners. The base station sits on a high point like a rooftop or a central pole. And around the campus, small receiver units called remotes or subscriber bridges listen and repeat their connection locally so they can carry video back to the master. So traditional wireless bridges often use narrow beam that cover a slice of the horizon, often around 30 degrees. That's great for a single link, but not so great when your cameras fan out around the campus. So our 90 degree horns lets one master cover a broad sector, often replacing two or three narrower setup. So with one sector, now we can cover around the entire side of the campus and you should start with a map. When planning, you should mark every camera pole on the map, then pick a high central mounting point with a clear line of sights. Rooftops would be perfect. So let's meet our Wi-Fi 7 wireless bridge with a 90 degrees horn antenna. 90 degrees means each base station can blanket a broad sector three times wider than the usual 30 degrees. And with one base station, we cover a full quarter of the campus. That's perfect for a courtyard or an entire side of the school. And because it's Wi-Fi 7, so you're getting next-gen efficiency. And the wireless bridge enclosure is rugged and IP67 rated. That means it's built for weather, rain, dust, and temperature swing. And you can power and uplink it directly through power over Ethernet. PoE sends power over the Ethernet to the bridge. But for long backhaul runs, fiber is a great choice to carry the data back to the core with minimal loss. And if you want a deep dive on outdoor PoE and fiber design, you can check out our previous video after this one. And next, let's begin our setup together. So our Wi-Fi 7 wireless bridge is going to set here at the base station and we're going to connect three remote units. First bridge is going to connect to an IP camera and the second bridge is going to connect to an asset wireless access point. That's right, we can also connect to an wireless access point to broadcast Wi-Fi around the campus. And to our third one, we are going to connect to another IP camera. Let's begin here. I'm going to use an Ethernet cable to power up our wireless bridge and use another cable to connect to the IP camera. The wireless bridge is going to connect to the PoE port to get power and the IP camera connecting to the LAN port so we can send video data back to the master bridge through our remote bridge. Coming to the second one, we are going to do exactly the same. PoE for the wireless bridge, LAN port for our wireless access point. Now let's power it up. Alright. And coming to our last bridge here. Again, using an Ethernet cable to power our wireless bridge through the PoE port. Then use another Ethernet cable for the LAN port to our IP camera. So all our remote units are done. That's pretty easy. Now let's get back to our base station. When you're installing the wireless bridge, small movement matter. You can use alignment tool at the master and the remote and center each remote inside the 90 degree sectors. As you can see, all our remote units are inside the 90 degrees and we should wait for reading to settle, then tighten it. 
Now this is already connected to our PoE managed switch to get the power. We're going to use another short patch cord to connect the router to our manage switch and from our manage switch to the network video recorder so we can display video footage on our monitor so the whole setup is done now you're looking at our big screen monitor and we already get one camera live because the third wireless bridge the client bridge is already connected to our master bridge but not this one so now I'm going to show you how to connect client bridge to the master bridge using our laptop before we do the connection first you have to use an ethernet cable connect from the wireless bridge LAN port directly to your laptop which I already did so let's begin so first thing first, you have to make sure the IP address and the bridge are under the same subnet. Then we can open up the browser and type in the IP address of our bridge. Then you can type in the password to log in. First we have to go to wireless. Now for the point to multipoint setup, make sure you click PTMP instead of standard Wi-Fi. This is the client bridge, so I already switched to client. There are two ways we can match with the master bridge. First is scan. After you scan it, you will have a list of devices. Let's see. Then we can join our master bridge here. Let's type in the password. Or second way, we can type in the SSID and the password. Now for indoor testing, we are using power around 10 or 11, but when you're doing it outdoor, make sure you max it. Now let's down it to 10 so we can detect each other in such a short distance. And everything else are defaulted. So now let's hit save and apply and wait for it to connect. Then we can go to network. We can use static IP address to type it in. Well, let's change it maybe to 169 or you can use DHCP but when you're using DHCP make sure you download a dedicated software to discover the IP address it's also able to manage VLAN so now let's save and apply I already changed the IP address, so let's type in 169 here. Type in the password again. So here we go. Now our client bridge is already connected. Now let's reconnect our IP camera and see if we can get the video feed move on to our network video recorder let's search now i'm seeing two cameras coming up let's add it to the network video recorder here we go now we have two cameras alive i'm going to wave my hand so you can see the first one and the second one so the whole system is live to get a stable connection using wireless bridge we know that frequency is crucial if 5.6 frequency is noisy you can consider using 6 or higher frequency option but one important thing is for outdoor or fixed link use in 6 may be restricted or require specific authorization in some countries so you should always check local regulation before deployment and one master can serve many remotes but remember 
all remotes share the sector's capacity, so you should plan for your total video bit rates with comfortable headroom. And in our wireless bridge test, we tested eight remote bridges at one kilometer from the master bridge. We share about 800 megabit per second aggregate throughput, and that's the pool they all draw from. So you should allocate per site bit rates accordingly and leave margin for peaks, retry, and maintenance. And if you get unstable link, you can always recheck line of sights and alignment storms. And if interference creeps in, you can always rescan or shift frequency channel. So today, we stood up a point to multi point backhaul for IP cameras master on the rooftop and remotes on poles. The result is reliable video to the control room without trenching. And if you're planning your own campus or large outdoor deployment, you can feel free to drop your questions below. And if this helped, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And I'll see you in our next one.